here with a lesson for Acoustic Guitar Magazine. Today we're looking at the tune called Bill Cheatham. Uh, this is a classic fiddle tune that's played often at jams and that kind of thing. So it's a really good song to learn. Um, it's also a really one, fun one to play. Um, it's in the key of A, so we're using the G shape uh, for this tune, but we've got capo on the second fret. So that puts us in the key of A. I'm gonna talk like we're in G, just because it's easier to talk about since we're using the G shape. But yeah, just remember, we are in A. <laughs> so if you end up playing this with other folks, especially people like fiddle players that don't aren't able to use capos, um, you gotta be in that A uh, key, even though we're in the G shape. So um, this tune is diatonic. That means that the notes in the melody come directly from the G scale. Um, it's really essential to this tune, so I want to take a few minutes here to just kind of really dig into that. Um, in example two in the tablature, you'll find just the open position G scale, and I'll just walk through that real quick. Um, starts on the low G string, or I'm sorry, the low E string, the G note. So that's third fret, and then A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. So that gives us the G scale on the lower strings. Now we can do it an octave higher, starting on that G string. A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. So you can play this uh, forward or ascending. You can also play it descending, going in the other direction. You can also go all the way down to the low E notes. That would be G, F sharp, E, F sharp, G. And that gives you the whole G scale on the on these four frets and the open strings. So open strings and the top four frets, which is open position. Um, so yeah, you can go in either direction or you can mix and match in any type of combination. And that gives you melodies to songs like Bill Cheatham. So the melody to Bill Cheatham, you can think about it as like just a different arrangement of the notes in the G scale. So what I'm going to do is just play through the A part and just kind of pay attention to that and realize like, oh, yeah, this is just the G scale in different little arrangements, right? So here we go. So it, you can really hear it in this last passage. All right, that is all the notes in the G scale in a matter of two bars, um, forming a melody that doesn't really sound like the G scale, right? So it's, uh, you know, practicing scales and, um, yeah, memorizing them and everything that goes with it can be tedious, but it really pays off in the long run. Um, there is one note in here that is not part of the G scale, and it kicks off the song. It's this D sharp note. Um, and that's just a quick little passing tone that, um, that kind of drops down into that first D note. All right, but everything else is straight out of the G scale. Um, yeah, I think that covers everything I wanted to touch on in the A section. Um, you will be able to hear this slowed down at the end of the video. So I'll play it slower with a metronome um, all the way through the tune. So you'll have that to refer to. Uh, if you need you know, a slowed down version, you'll be able to see what my right hand's doing, what my left hand's doing at a slower speed. Um, but yeah, moving on to the B part. I'll just play through it first and then have a few things to say about it here. So here's the B part. <laughs> Okay, 
So that's how it sounds. And what's going on here is we're getting out of the open position and starting to move up the neck using what are called triad shapes. So one of these shapes is right here. That's the first one that we start with. Um, you've got a bar on the top two strings at the third fret, and then you take your fourth finger and hit the, uh, the third string at the fourth fret. Did I say fourth finger? You take your second finger and put it there. Um, a lot of numbers going on right now. Uh, but yeah, if this looks familiar, it's maybe because you held this as an F down here and you were just moving it up. Um, and that gives us a G. All right, so that's a G chord. Uh, triads are chords, so the triad here is the G. Um, we then move that triad shape here to a C. So now I'm at frets five, five, and three. The way I like to play that here is to, from the G, just take that second finger and bump it up a fret. And then take your third finger, fifth fret, first finger, because on the third fret, all right? That's C, so we go G to C. Then we can go D by sliding all of that up two frets. All right, and that gives us our triad shape. So what happens in the B part is we have these different triad shapes and we pick through them to form the melodies. We use a cross picking pattern. It goes like this. All right, and that pattern here is second string, third string, second string, first string. And in the right hand, we're doing down, up, down, up. All right? And then you can take your pinky and land it on the eighth fret here. Technically, 10th fret, but we've got the capo, so I'm gonna call it eight. Okay, so that's what's going on in the B part. And then after that, it ends with a kind of scalar run in the open position. Repeats the triads and then another scalar run. And that's what's going on in the B part. Um, yeah, yeah. So we just we got these, you know, rolling through these triad shapes. Um, again, I'll play through the whole thing slower at the end, so you can reference that if you need if you need some more context. Um, Let's say you get to a point where you're feeling great with this song. You can play through it start to finish um, and you've got it memorized and it feels good and you're now at a point where you're thinking, um, hey, I'd like to start to change things around, make this my own version, maybe, um, yeah, change up the parts a little bit to make it more interesting. Maybe you want to play through it several times or you want to have multiple versions in case you go to a jam and play this with other people. Um, one easy way to change things in this tune is to alter those triad shapes. So you could take that section and you can alter it somehow. We'll look at three different ways that you can alter it. One way to do it is to drop it down an octave. So you can take that down an octave and start here. And that's example three in the tablature. How that goes here, you could play it like this. And you could even finish it out and do that last little tag at the end. And do that all in the lower octave. Um, so that gives you a, a new way to play through the tune um, in another octave. But there's more. We could still look at two more examples that alter these um, triad shapes. These are gonna be examples four and five in the tablature. All right, so that's what we originally have. We have G, C, D. What we could do is take our G, C, and D shapes that we know from the open position. So G in the open position, we could think of like this, right? Um, just like these bit, this big G chord. I'm not doing anything with my index finger. It might look like I am, but I'm not. Or you might know it like this. Um, across the top three strings is just zero, zero, three, right? Similarly with a C chord, you could play a C chord zero, one, three. And then of course the D chord, two, three, two. So we could roll through these triads. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the C is actually gonna be zero, one, zero. 
I think I said 0, 1, 3. That's also a C. But the way it appears in example 4 is 0, 1, 0. Alright? There you go. That's example 4 in the tab. Um, example 5 is the same idea. We're just dropping down a set of strings. So G. These are all open. And then here. That's our C. Then you can get D by moving that up two frets. And this is actually like a D sus, which gives it a really cool sound. And then you can end it by using um, either open G string, fifth fret on the D string, which is the same note, or you can play both of them together. All right, so that's the idea. So what I'll do here, I'll play through this. Um, you, I'll, just, I'll just combine all of these into a B part that uses all these different ideas. I'll start with the original one um, that we have. It's an example one, then I'll do example three, then four, then five. All right, so here we go. just an idea you can mix and match these any way that you like um, this is just a way to learn the fretboard a little bit better to experiment with some new ideas to take the tune Bill Cheatham one step further after you've uh, learned it you know the melody as it's presented so what I'm gonna do now as promised is play through this at um, a much lower tempo this is gonna be 60 BPM um, and yeah this is this is so you can watch both hands and get a good version of the tune um, this is going to close out the video, but I do want to say if you have any questions, any follow-up suggestions or questions or whatever, um, drop a comment below or shoot me an email um, and would love to hear what you have to say. Um, so yeah, anyway, here we go. I'm just going to pull up a metronome. This is 60 BPM. And, uh, oh, I'm going to turn up the volume attached. Here we go. 60 BPM. This is Bill Cheatham. All right, have fun. I'll see y'all see y'all later. One, two.